Good afternoon, LockDoc coming back to you here. Okay, so today I'm going to take this opportunity to show how you key small format interchangeable core. Small format means it's probably made by either Falcon, Arrow, or Best. Uh, Best has been in the business longer. Um, one of the one things you can always tell the difference of, you can see this. This is a Falcon one specifically, but you can see a little notch right here. All right, that's meant for a slide cover to go over here. Now it's always kind of standard. You want to have this flat butt end go up against that right there, cover it. Um, in terms of pins, you can either have a six pin like this one is, if you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, or you could have a seven pin, which would have another slot right here. Um, all right, so uh, first things first, we got to figure out our key numbers. So whenever you're laying out key numbers, you always want to have your control key listed up top, and then any grandmasters, masters, submasters, and then and the end change keys. Uh, in this case, this job specifically just calls for a control key, and then just an operating key. So it's very simple. Um, in these situations, I really just pull numbers out of my butt uh, just for the sake of. Uh, randomness. Uh, so in this case, let's do uh, we'll do a five, three, eight, one, two, six, two. As you notice up here, I have it listed tip to bow. Now that is referring to the tip here and the bow here. Uh, small format interchangeable core keys are different from every other key because, as you can see here, there's no key stop. Or anything to stop the key uh, when it's within the cylinder. Um, it's actually it's this part back here. Uh, when you slide it through you can see what I'm saying. Uh, the key blank just stops right here and there's nothing over here. Uh, that's how you can have six and seven pin keys. Uh, so whenever I'm laying it out I like to, this is a nice handy reminder just, just so you don't have any mistakes because I've had that one happen before. All right, so we got our control number established. Uh, now we got to figure out our change. Um, typically, when you're setting up multi keys, uh, when you're master keying stuff, or you know, in this case, it's just a control and a change. If you notice how it goes, odd, odd, even, 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 even. You want to keep that same pattern in any keys that you have down below. Uh, this way, it sets it up so hopefully you don't have it. A situation where one number is one less. Uh, I believe with best it's kind of different. You can do that. Um, it's not typically what you want to do because as you can see here's a number two wafer and it's tiny. Um, it is actually 25 thousandths of an inch thick. Um, so when you have that skinny of a pen it runs the risk of binding within the cylinder. Um, so typically try and want to stay away from the tiny ones and go something with a little bit thicker and then that prevents that all together. All right, so back to at hand, we need to figure out the change number. So let's go one, seven, two, eight, two, six. All right, another thing I also like to do when setting these up because uh, you'll see in a second, I like doing something that separates the numbers and I carry this line all the way down because as you'll see in a second that's where I put all of the keying information as far as what pins I'm putting into what space so this keeps it easy for the eyes just so everything can be established alright small format ICs uh, there is a mathematical formula to figure this all out um, although I never figured it out I've always had this kind of like cheating slide chart. Um, if you're interested in one, it's just, it's like a Falcon 0128 interchangeable core pinning chart. Um, it's worth its weight in gold, which doesn't weigh that much, so it's not that much in gold. But it is an excellent tool to have in these situations. Um, I've already figured it out as far as my pinning. But to make it easy... I'll explain a little bit here. So on one side, you have master key numbers. It starts at 0 and goes up to, I believe, 4. 
And then on the opposite side, it has the numbers 5 through 9. I'm looking right here. So just to kind of run you through it, uh, in this case, your control key number is always listed up here. It's static. It's the change key or master key that changes. All right, so in this case, we have a 5 and a 1. So we flip it over. We try and line up the 1 here with the 5 up top. All right. So we got a 1. Now they say down here your change key. All right. So in this case, it is a 1. So we have a 1, 14, and an 8. The next one would be a 3 and a 7. And I won't go through all of these. It's pretty self-explanatory once you know what you're doing. Um, but a 3 and a 7, you go down to the 7. So we got a 7, 7, 6, and 10. 7, 6, and 10. I also have it labeled over here as this being the top pin, driver pin, bottom pin, so that there's no confusion when you're putting all these pins in. Um, another tool that comes is completely invaluable is this. It's called a capping block. Um, this top piece right here is what you use to cap the top of these with these covers that I showed. If you don't have the covers and you have the individual caps as for like Bess or Arrow, you put this piece right here and they give you a little block and that's how, you know, it only goes, I can't tell from that angle. It only goes down that much. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's not much. Um, but that's how you ensure that the pins aren't going too far down and causing uh, springs to bind or springs to get caught in there. So we'll just remove those. All right, so when you start off with your cylinder, you want to turn the barrel 90 degrees. All right, that prevents any pins as you're putting in there to fall into that. And the other thing you want to do is you want to take your control arm, which that's what this piece is called, and slide it over. Again, this prevents any pins from going down there. And you'll see why in a second. All right, so you load it into the capping block. Now remember, we're going tip to bow. So the tip, so you're going to start putting pins here and then working your way back. So the first one we have is a one bottom pin. So we get a one bottom pin. And you got a 14. And you have an 8. Now, if all is right and your pins are all what they need to be, this will line up. Whoop. This will create pretty much a secondary shear line across the top. It's kind of your way of double checking to make sure it's what it needs to be. Um, you probably can't tell on the camera, but this sticks up just a little bit, but it's not, that's acceptable. Um, if it was sticking up a lot more, it would tell you one of the pins isn't what it should be. Uh, so that being said, we'll, uh, we'll move right along. So the next one is a 7, bottom pin. Whoop. And we've got a 6 and a 10. So we've got a 6 and a 10. And again, lines up flat across the top, so I know I'm good there. So we've got a 2, 16, and a 5. So a 2, 16. and a five. Uh, one thing I feel I should note too, these pins are not like the same pins that we'd, you, you would use in like a sergeant lock, a schleg lock, pretty much any other pin lock. Uh, small format IC pins are specific for small format IC cores. Uh, so they do take completely different pins and it has to do with the diameter uh, in which they are. All right, so we're in the fourth position here. So fourth position would be an eight bottom pin, a four driver pin, and an 11 top pin. I guess it kind of is also a driver pin as well, but I digress. All right, so eight. Four. And 11. 
Next one is a 2, 14, and 7. So we get a 2. and seven and the last one is a six bottom pin six top pin eleven top pin so six six and Eleven. All right. So now that you got all the pins in, if you look at them, see if I can get it to focus a little bit better there. There we go. That's a little bit better. They kind of stick up a little bit, but it's nothing major. All right. So the next step in this equation is we're going to end up taking your key and just kind of sliding it in. You don't need to go all the way with it. Just a little bit. Just enough to turn it. You turn it and all the pins will drop down. All right, and then fun part putting the springs in. All right, so the springs always come in nice and clumped up, it's nice to kind of separate them before you do anything with them. So, I tell you, sometimes they get so intertangled, it's really difficult to kind of peel them apart without. Uh, messing up the coils and the springs but usually you just kind of twist them and they come apart all right so we got all the springs in now i've pre-cut a control key i'm going to show you in a second the machine used to cut these blanks um, they kind of remind me of an old typewriter but you punch instead of hit key buttons but this is a good way of testing it to make sure your pins are what they need to be. In case they aren't, you don't have to rip the top off of it. But you just put your thumb over top of the springs to provide, you know, decent back pressure. Put your key in, and if you turn it back here, you can see it's moving it. All right, so it's pretty much right to assume I got the right pins in there because if I didn't, this key would not work. All right, so the fun part has to do with capping it. I've always enjoyed these because of this part right here. But helps to have a nice dense uh, lead block to hammer against. But this is the part. Okay, so this is called the slide cover. Um, the easiest way to go about this is butt it up against there, hold your finger there, and this capping block, you want to have this kind of raised part. You want to have that pointed downwards, and then you just slide it over to where it's covering the edge, and you hold it in place. And you don't need a big hammer, just a little one. Probably hit that more times than I needed, but Oh well. Anyway, so there is the key portion, and as you can tell, those lips are what provide that cover from staying in place. Um, now you put your key in just to test it, make sure no pins are bound up or you know any kind of those problems happened. So that is done right there. Now let me get all of this cleared out, and I'll get the punch, and I'll explain a little bit more on the key machine side of this. All right, so let me see if I can get a good angle on this. All right, so this is the main cutting mechanism. Every time you cut a key, you want to take this and push it as far back as possible. That's why with these keys, you start at the tip and move back. It has everything to do with when you're cutting on this thing. Um, over here is where you set the depths. So in this case, uh, all of these small format ICs all have this kind of lip right here. And this lip has to do with right in here. And it slides in. You can't really tell, but there's kind of like a hook that goes down, and that's what hooks it in there. Anyways, you go, you push it in until it stops, and use this to kind of tighten it down. So in this case, we're cutting the change keys. Uh, so our first cut's going to be a one. So we adjust this to a one. Punch, and then it 
moves over to the next slot. Our next cut is a seven. So we go to the seven. And sometimes it sticks, so you gotta make sure it pushes. So you push over on this side just to make sure it doesn't stick. Uh, our next cut is a two. There's a two. There's an eight. Another two. And there's a six. So if you did everything right, all the cuts will kind of look very uniform in their spacing. Um, I know I've had instances where this has gotten stuck and you know you'll see a double cut and it's pretty obvious when you look at it. Um, so if all that works well, put it in the key, and it works beautifully. So not really in short, but in short, that is how you key a Falcon or Best or Arrow small format IC. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. And as always, uh, like, subscribe, and hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.